Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is benevolent cooperation. And the big question for today's lecture is, what happens if states have nice preferences? For the last large chunk of lectures, we've assumed that states have conflictual preferences and this threw them into the prisoner's dilemma. And what we saw here is that with those preferences for conflict, each individual, regardless of what the other side is choosing to do, prefers to take the non-cooperative action, defect, over the cooperative action, cooperate. And so as a result, we see an outcome of mutual defection consistently, which is very bad and very conflictual for the world. Now, again, we made the assumption that the states have these non-cooperative preferences. And while that's true about some states some of the time, as it turns out, most states most of the time are not in conflict with one another and sort of just really want to get along. And that being the case, this model here doesn't really fit those situations. So the next question for us becomes what happens when we have other preferences which are more peaceful in comparison to the preferences that we put down for the prisoner's dilemma? And that's what we're investigating here in this lecture. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the ones for each party and switch them with the twos for each party. And I'm doing that right now. So this is a different game. It's called the Stag Hunt. I'm not going to go into why it's called that. If you're interested, you can check Wikipedia. It dates back to a story that Rousseau had in one of his books. Anyway, when you switch those payoffs around, what we're seeing here is that both players most prefer now to cooperate. The way that each individual gets his highest payoff is by cooperating as long as the other guy is cooperating as well. So that is the big switch now from the prisoner's dilemma to the stag hunt, and I want to illustrate a few key results that we can get if we make this switch. The most important one is that players can now credibly commit to cooperation in a one-shot game. And this was not possible in a prisoner's dilemma before. We saw that players can end up cooperating in a prisoner's dilemma if we have a long shadow of the future and they can threaten the possibility of mutual defection and mutual punishment in the future if there's any deviation from cooperation up front. But that's not possible to get in a one-shot game. And the reason is as follows. This is something that we've done before, so this should be familiar and it should be a review by now. If both players were to communicate before this game started and saying, hey, you know, let, let's cooperate. It'll be better for both of us than if we both defect because we could both get a one instead of both of us getting a zero. Well, neither one of those players has incentive to follow through with that. Neither one can credibly commit to continuing this idea of cooperation once they actually sit down and play the game. And the reason is as follows. Look at the top left corner. Focus on the blue one that player one is getting by both players cooperating. Well, would player one want to stick with this cooperation strategy given that player two is cooperating? The answer is no, because if player one switches from cooperate to defect, now we're in that bottom left row or bottom left cell, he gets a payoff of two which is greater than the one that he was getting by sticking with cooperation. And the same is true for player two. Player two is getting that one in red in the top left corner if they both cooperate, but player two can't credibly commit to cooperating because if she thinks player one is going to cooperate, she should defect and earn that red two in the top right corner instead of getting that red one as she would if she stuck with her current strategy. Now, this is in contrast to what we see in a stag hunt. So in a stag hunt, imagine that we had this situation again where player one and player two beforehand get together and say, hey, you know what? Let's cooperate. It'll be better for both of us than if we both defect and get zeros. So we'll get twos instead. Now this is possible. Why? Why can we credibly commit to cooperation? Well, again, imagine that I'm player one and you as player two are going to cooperate, or at least I think that you're going to cooperate. How should I respond to that? Well, if I continue my cooperation, I get a payoff of two. That's the blue two in the top left corner. And if I were to switch my strategy to defect, well, now I'm getting a worse payoff. I'm getting a payoff of one, and that's worse than my payoff of getting two by sticking with cooperation. Essentially, what we're seeing here is that if player one has a cooperative preference, if player one really just wants to get along with player two, if player two is playing friendly with player one, then player one wants to reciprocate that friendliness. He doesn't want to stab player two in the back by defecting while player two cooperates. And the same is true for player two. If player two thinks that player one is going to cooperate, then she's going to receive that red two by continuing her cooperation, whereas she'll only receive one if she stabs player one in the back and chooses to defect while player one cooperates. 
So both players here can credibly commit to cooperation, which is not possible in a, uh, in a prisoner's dilemma, at least in the one-shot version of that. The second key result is that inefficient, uncooperative outcomes are still possible. The inefficient, uncooperative outcome is still possible. Why is that? Well, let's look at the bottom right corner now. Imagine that both players thought that the other one was going to defect on the original player. Well, in that case, we're both getting a payoff of zero. So if I think that you're going to stab me in the back, my best response to that is going to be to stab you in the back as well. If I think that you're going to defect, I should choose to defect as well so I can maintain that blue zero in the bottom right corner. Whereas if I cooperate, I'm only going to be getting a negative one. I'm going to be allowing you to stab me in the back. And that's something that I don't want. So if I suspect that you're defecting, I'm going to defect as well. And the same is true for you. If you suspect that I'm defecting, you should defect and get that red zero in the bottom right corner as opposed to cooperating and getting that negative one in red in the bottom left corner. So if I think you're defecting, I should defect. If you think I'm defecting, uh, you should defect. And so what we see here is the self-reinforcing phenomenon where we both think the other guy is going to defect and we defect as a, as a result. It justifies our decision to defect, which in turn justifies the other guy's decision to defect, which in turn justifies the original guy's decision to defect, and so forth. And so it's still possible to get these bad outcomes here, even if players have cooperative preferences. And even though both players most want to cooperate, both players most want to get along with each other now, it's still possible for them to not get along and end up in this bad outcome where they're both stabbing each other in the back. And as a result, we call the stag hunt a coordination game. This is something that's going to recur in future lectures. It's a coordination game because we need to coordinate on getting to that friendly cooperate cooperate outcome instead of reaching that unfriendly defect defect outcome where we're both stabbing each other in the back. And actually, this sort of coordination game is one primary motivation for why we have international institutions in this world. If international institutions help us by disseminating information, by telling us what the other players are deciding to do, they can motivate and convince other guys to go ahead and cooperate along with us by showing them that they are going to be reciprocating cooperation because the first original player is also cooperating, then we can get ourselves out of the stab in the back outcome and get ourselves into a situation where we're both being friendly. So again, when we're in these sorts of coordination problems, if we can reveal information about what we're choosing to do, then it becomes easier for the other guys to cooperate. If it becomes clear that I'm being friendly to you, it becomes easier for you to become friendly to me, and vice versa. So we end up in this virtuous cycle instead of a vicious cycle where we're both reinforcing our friendship by continuing to cooperate with each other with the help of the international institution making sure that we're actually following through on what we say that we're planning on doing. So that's the stag hunt for you. That's what happens when players have benevolent preferences and want to get along with each other. Cooperation is now possible in a one-shot game, although it's not guaranteed. That's an interesting result, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.